Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of Candid Conversations about network marketing. And I'm BK. And as usual, on the other end, Dr. Wayne. Hi, Dr. Wayne. Hi, BK. Hi, everyone. Good to see you again. I know it was just a short one week break. We apologize for our short absence last week, uh, but absence makes the heart grow fonder. I hope you missed us. <laughs> I think they do. I think they do. Most definitely, yes. <laughs> so I am very happy because, uh, again, I do not need to ask Dr. Wayne that question of what are we going to talk about next because, or today, because as usual, um, or what we have done for this season, this is season number two, right? Yeah. This particular season, we have started to have... Um, uh, show notes, right? Show notes. Yes. And those yeah. of you who want to access the show notes, you can hit us up at networkmarketerpodcast.com. I'll say that again, networkmarketerpodcast.com. Just hit us up at this uh, website and you can access the show notes. So Dr. Wayne, we are going to talk about law number two, right? Yes, we certainly are. We're going to talk about law number two. But as we normally go through, what I like to do is just uh, go through a little bit what we spoke about last time, um, which was law number one. So during last time we spoke, we looked at who else would like to know how to unlock your full potential. And we used um, the immutable law, um, the law of mentalism, law number one, to basically go through this. And remembering there's seven universal laws and these uni universal laws Three are immutable, which means they can't be changed, and the others are mutable, which means we can change them. So the law of mentalism is basically about um, thinking, think of it like this way, your mind is part of a universal mind, the same in kind with the only difference being one degree. So we're only one degree. And your reality is a manifestation of your mind. And we went through with regards to quantum physics, understanding how the information field is equivalent to the law of mentalism in terms of the ancients call it the law of mentalism. And in quantum physics, we call it the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth dimensions, for example. And we even talked about how every day we can have up to 70,000 thoughts. And of course, unfortunately, they say from... Um, Western medicine, that most of these thoughts, up to 90% of these thoughts are, um, uh, are in the negative, unfortunately. So this is where we talked about the importance of really looking um, at what your thoughts are and even asking the question every now and again, you know, what am I thinking about? And you'll be really, really surprised. I, I was speaking to someone last week, actually, and um, uh, about, I think this is about her fifth session we've chatted to her and during that she found it hard to actually understand that she's actually thinking about anything because she says that all the time she's looking at what she's doing and she doesn't remember thinking about anything and the interesting thing is when you haven't asked yourself this question before you really don't know that you're thinking and this is part of the problem 90 percent of us at um, 90% uh, of who we are was programmed prior to the age of seven. And these thoughts are always coming through. And uh, the interesting thing, as mentioned, it took us a few sessions and I got her to sit down and do the meditation that was spoken about in other podcasts. And she came back last time and said, I can't believe what I think about. <laughs> um, and she even uh, talked about how, um, you know, sometimes she might get um, depressed and that type of stuff. And uh, she's actually been told that she might be depressed at times, but totally denied it. And then when she looked at her thought, she said, I can actually, re I can kind of understand why people would actually say that. So it's really, really important. And that's what we went through in the first one with regards to learning about the law of mentalism. And we finished off with your thoughts are your destiny. So really, really interesting. It was a great session, wasn't it, BK? Yeah, it definitely was. And in fact, what, what, you, what you're saying just now uh, is really, really true because uh, there was someone who kind of said this. I can't remember who it was. I'm sorry, can I give, give credit to that person? He said that if, you, if your friends talk to you the way you talk to yourself, you wouldn't be <laughs> friends with yourself. 
<laughs> I mean, if, if you if you if you have a friend who is talking to you in the way that you talk to yourself sometimes, right? Or in fact, like what you just said, most of the time, we wouldn't be friends with ourselves, right? You would have wanted to get this friend out of your life, right? Sometimes, I mean, we we friends are friends. Yes, we may jokingly, you know, jibe at each other, uh, but that's always in in good in good humor. But it, if it's constant and it's repetitive, that is verbal abuse. <laughs> <laughs> but but unfortunately we do that to ourselves right yeah, of the way yeah, yeah. We do. and 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 like what you just shared just now most of us don't even realize that that's we right don't even so, realize most, <laughs> <laughs> so most of us like, like if you think deeper about what was just said there bk most of us don't even know or don't even think that we wouldn't be good friends with ourselves because we don't know what we say <laughs> or what we're thinking <laughs> That's why there's a lot of truth in the statement that first thing we need to do is to love ourselves. <laughs> ah, yeah. How true is that? How true is that? Um, so, yeah, so that was the first first immutable law. Now we're going to go into another immutable law, um, which is, and I've, I've um, put a heading here of learn how your thoughts dictate your future. And this is by understanding the law of correspondence. Um, this immutable law, once again, can't be changed. But the good thing, as we've spoken many times before, BK, is that these immutable laws, if we work with them and if we understand them, we can then actually take them to a new level in terms of helping us to achieve what we want to in our lives. And remembering um, the major goal of all of this for anyone listening to this, and it doesn't have to be network marketers, this could be a small business person, or it could be someone who has owns a business who has a 1000 employees, no matter how small, no matter how big, no matter what you do, whether you are at this particular time in your life, like I was at 23, not knowing what to do, never read a book, um, a bit different than BK, because I never, um, uh, I nearly failed grade 12. I've come from uh, the school of hard knocks, so to speak. But the thing is, when you start using these um, immutable laws and you understand them and you put them together in ways that your mind can now take it to another level, you can collapse time. And this is really important to grasp and to understand. We go through the fourth dimension of time when we understand these laws, meaning that, say, for example, if we use time as the thing that dictates to us what is about to occur in our future, say if we, like using me myself as an example, at the age of basically around about that 25, 26, just about to get married, had nothing in the bank, had to borrow money from the bank to get a car, and wanted one of my goals was to um, own my own house outright in the next five years by the time I got to 30. Most would say that's impossible. But when you learn how to do all this, you collapse time and things can happen so fast, you'll be actually... Um, amazed at what happens. And I remember an old saying that goes something like, and I think it was Earl Nightingale who said something like, um, once you unlock these thoughts and once you unlock and collapse time, you'll be amazed at where all the money has been sitting or where all your, whatever your goal or whatever your why may be. So this is the important thing why BK and I, the passion in this is to help you to achieve your goals collapsing time so that you can achieve them in the fastest possible means. Isn't it, BK? Yeah, I think the interesting thing about what Dr. Wayne just said is that a lot of times when we are not even aware of something, there is no way that we can access that something. Yeah. I, I mean, like a simple analogy or simple example is like, let's say you didn't know that the, a particular restaurant in the city exists and serves the greatest whatever kind of food you like let's say the best steak in 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 the state that you are in right and you wouldn't even think about going there right but yeah. when a friend of yours over a, a dinner conversation or drinks and then he said hey I, you need to try this new steakhouse i discovered it serves absolutely the best steak in the whole of whichever city you're in and the minute that awareness came to you, 
you suddenly have a new destination in mind. You suddenly re- decided that, okay, the next time I'm going for a steak dinner, I'm going to go to that place. But just a few seconds before that, imagine just a few seconds before that, that particular steakhouse was never in your awareness. Correct. Right. Yeah. So what uh, Dr. Wayne was sharing just now is that, you know, when, like, oh, what old Nightingale was saying, when you raise your awareness and, and new things come into your awareness about how to manage time, how to look at time, and like what Dr. Wayne said, how you can actually compress time, it really opens up a whole new world of awareness for you. I also wanted to quickly touch on something that perhaps I think some of our listeners may um, have a difficulty with this concept of immutable and mutable laws. Immutable, yeah. Um, yeah, but the thing is this, so think of it this way. Um, it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing when something cannot be changed. Think of it like in a, in a sports arena, you need to make sure that your goalposts are always in the same place <laughs> because when that doesn't change, you know how to play the game, right? Now imagine if you are playing a, a, a soccer game where the goalposts are always shifting. I think that it's not going to be a very fun game as well, right? So the immutable laws, while they cannot be changed, it also tells us that when we can work with it the way that it is, we should be working with them, it means that we can achieve a lot of more, a lot more things than we can, right? Most definitely, yeah, most definitely. So the law of correspondence, remember we mentioned, is immutable. And this is, so what does it mean? So it's the second of the universal laws, and it tells us as above, as below, as below, as above. And this means that there is harmony, agreement, and correspondence between the physical, mental, and the spiritual realms. There is no separation since everything in the universe, including you, originates from the one source. The same pattern is expressed on all planes of existence from the smallest electron to the largest star and vice versa. So let's try and dig deeper into this. It means that you are created with a universal energy and consciousness. And as a part of that energy, you have the ability to command and impress upon it. And this is what BK meant before. Once we understand that the goalposts are where they are and we understand this, this immutable law, what happens then is we work with it and therefore we have the ability to command and oppress upon it. The law of a correspondence tells us that our outer world is nothing more than a reflection of our inner world, as mentioned, as within, so without. So just think of another way of thinking about this is it's in the law of um, um, think of it through patterns and repeated at different levels like a fractal. Now, this part I really, really love. Um, So on a macro level, the distribution of the fractal creates a large cohesive structure while the pattern is then repeated at smaller and smaller levels at infinitum. Now, what are we talking about here? One of the things that you may have come across is the Fibonacci sequence. And this is what we're talking about in fractals. This is things that um, that Fibonacci had found, that there's a sequence of numbers, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, etc., And the interesting thing is these numbers then are represented in nature. They are represented in our human body. If we are an architect, we use these numbers to basically build um, something that looks aesthetically pleasing. So the Fibonacci sequence in numbers, we can actually see it, for example, in the petals of flowers. Most have three, like lilies and um, other types of plants. Then you've got five um, petals like rose hips or eight like cosmia or 13 like some daisies and chicory has 34 and 55. And there's other plants that then have 89. So this is fascinating. Even cone shells, et cetera. You know, all these different things have these Fibonacci relationships, which is what we're talking about here as above, so below. Even the branching in trees, um, arrangement of leaves on a stem, um, the the the, um, the fruitlets on a on a pineapple, the flowering of an anticho- artichoke, and uh, the uncurling uh, the uncurling of a fern, and the arrangement of a pine cone and the family tree of a honeybee, all is Fibonacci numbers. And even the coastlines, when you look at it from afar, when you go up 
into space, you actually see these different fractals as well, which is really incredible. Then we can even move it onto the human body, the face. You know, the length of the face over the width of the face is a is a fractal or a Fibonacci number. We can go into the finger, the toes, the every part of the body has these one, two, three, five, eight Fibonacci ratios. This golden ratio, which is just incredible. Um, so <laughs> it's quite impressive in the big game. <laughs> Yeah, it is always very fascinating. I mean, when we start to explore and understand this, and again, like we mentioned in previous episodes, because um, science is always growing, our body of knowledge is always growing, and very interestingly, modern science have now given us even more tools, even more ways to interpret and to understand the world that we live in, and that has again opened up a whole new level of uh, awareness. For example, like. You know, the invention of the electron microscope it allows us to see into the, the very small bits of our existence, into our cells, into our, our DNA and stuff like that. And then it actually corresponds, like what Dr. Wayne was just saying, so within, uh, you know, so without, right? So what is outside of us is also within us, which is fascinating. Yes, yes. And with the Fibonacci number, they've actually called this the golden ratio or the golden um, spiral. So I, I find this incredible because there's e even if we look at um, mathematics when we're dealing with, say, algorithmics with trading, they're using these Fibonacci numbers. Um, and if we take this even further, going back to just talking about the um, uh, this law of correspondence in terms of uh, the human mind, when we think of something, when we look at that in a really deep space and we then actually meditate on that, whatever it might be, say it might be, I'll use myself as an example, we want to, I want to own my own house by X, okay, um, by X amount of time. Now, it's kind of like the four-minute mile, mile. When... Um, it wasn't achieved, humans thought it was not possible. And this is kind of what you were saying there before as well, BK, um, in that whenever we don't think something's possible, what happens then is that we think it's impossible until someone breaks it. So one person broke the four-minute mile back, I think, in the 1950s, and from there the next year it was something like 17 people did it. And now it is common that that happens. Now, the reason I'm bringing this, talking about this, is because when I set my goal, and um, back then I didn't know this, but now I do, when I set that goal, there has been many, many instances where this has actually been achieved before. So therefore, there was a coherent message in the universe that this can happen and you can um, um, collapse time or you can have this time that can be really shortened because of your thoughts. So if we have a goal and we now place that in the now in terms of being achieved as if, as if it is being achieved now, what happens now is we send out this frequency into these fields and then if we do this with huge emotion, it will come back as reality to us. However, if we then step out of that and then we start thinking in the negative, oh, look at this, it hasn't been achieved, then what happens is we now go back into time, meaning now time is going to slow down for us. So this is really important to grasp and understand as well. So in our outer reality, sorry, if our outer reality is unhappy, chaotic, or unfulfilled, it is a direct result of what is happening inside us. So this is what I mean by if we are really in oneness with our goal, and even though we have no evidence at the time, meaning the second you come out of that meditation or that visualization, you have no evidence that's going to occur, but if we go into that unhappy, chaotic, unfulfilled world, as I just mentioned, it will then actually kind of block or be an anchor to us fulfilling that goal. Anything there, BK, to touch on? 
Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm sorry. So um, basically, like we we do talk about, you know, the word. I I'm kind of a fan of words, and I'm kind of a fan of like the etymology of words, like how words came about, right? So even the word like the word for sickness, which is disease. If you break it apart, it just means um, this ease, which means the lack of ease, right? So sometimes we can actually influence the way our body feels because of if we are constantly in a state of very negative situations, I think that affects our body chemistry as well. Unfortunately, yes. But obviously, it also turns turns it around by saying that if you start to feel more positively about Many things that can also trigger different chemical reactions inside your body, which then makes you gravitate towards ease. Yes. We want to have ease in our body. We want to have our joints properly lubricated. We want to have our blood system flowing well. We want to make sure that the nutrients are going to the right places, and so on and so forth. We want our Our electrical neurons that are firing every you know uh, trillions of times probably <laughs> per second to be going to the right places, right, and not be interrupted or not be blocked. So we should try to aim to gravitate towards a state of ease. And if if being more positive inside us can help that, I would say give it a try, <laughs> <laughs> because. Just taking that to another level, BK. Because if we, each one of us listening to this, ourselves, including BK and I, if we can come from that space of unconditional love, love, gratitude, humility, um, and we continually vibrate this energy out into the universe, out into the Information fields, as in quantum physics, the fifth and sixth, seventh, and eighth dimension, so to speak. What happens now is everyone who now meditates or sits still has the potential of being able to easily, as with ease, move into these fields and therefore receive the positiveness of that as well. And what will happen as We think what this immutable law also says. So does everyone else, because we are a tribe. So we, the world, is a reflection of our of our um, collective thoughts. So right now, if we look at the world, our collective thoughts therefore must be quite negative. However, there are. This is another reason why BK and I are doing this because what we want to do is one bit at a time or one person at a time. If we can influence one person at a time, and hopefully thousands and thousands of people who eventually will be listening to this will then be able to. Um, sorry, thousands and thousands of people listening to this, we might then be able to help more and more people to move into this constant state of positiveness, rather than a constant state of negativity, or a constant state of pessimism. What we want is a constant state of optimism, of being happy, feeling fulfilled. We don't want anger and hatred and loathing and shame and all these things. But if that is our world, then what happens? This, sorry, this is our internal world, meaning not very positive, meaning in the negative field of low self-esteem, etc. Then what happens? Then this now goes out into the cosmos. This goes out into law number one. So it goes out into law number one, unfortunately. And what happens now is now this is something that. Becomes our reality, even though we didn't want it to be, because that's what the law of mentalized mentalism basically means. It means we've got this information field out there that we can tap into, but unfortunately, if it's all all of us are thinking collectively in the negative, then what happens is our world then reflects that. It might be a pandemic. Virus, for example, that we're experiencing now. It might be a global financial collapse. It might be a real estate collapse. Whatever it may be. 
we, and once you get this, hopefully you'll, you'll understand this, what I'm about to say. Once we get this, if we keep on putting out the negatives, what happens is the world around us then collapses. Even our insects and bees and everything else basically is tapping into these thought processes. And this is why it's so important. This is why BK and I are doing this, to try and lift our vibration, to lift our frequencies so that we can then, all of us can tap into this field that is now of happiness and love and gratitude, etc. as well. Quite inspirational, hey, BK? <laughs> it is, yeah. And I, when, when Dr. Wayne was talking about this, it kind of reminded me about this other phenomenon that we talk about, which they call it the, the butterfly effect. They say yeah. that when a butterfly flaps a wing in a particular area, it could result in a tsunami in another area, right? Now, of course, uh, that, that when they describe that phenomenon is usually negative in a sense by saying that what small action can lead to a catastrophe, which is a tsunami on the other end. But if you think about it the other way around, which also means that when you as an individual starts to do something in your own capacity, in a very positive way, think of the, the, the butterfly effect that can result from that, right? Many times we kind of think that we can't really change the world, but in essence, actually we can. We can, you know, yeah. in essence, we can because even if it's just your individual action, think about how it's going to spiral out, and the butterfly effect in this case will be a positive one. Uh, there's a person that started this movement called Wealth Wednesday, and he kind of advocates that on every Wednesday, if you can go out and do something good for someone who is unsolicited. Um, he can change the world. You know, it can be something small like buying a coffee for the person just behind you in the queue. And that small unsolicited act of kindness will then resonate out, right? Because when you help that person just behind you by buying him a cup of coffee, he felt good. He goes back to the office. He's nicer to his colleagues or his subordinates or his bosses and they feel good. And then that person may go back home and become nicer to his spouse or his children. And then they feel good as well, right? So I totally agree with what Dr. Wayne is saying that we, it can definitely resonate out. And the butterfly effect in this case can be a very positive one. Most definitely, BK, most definitely. So the, and if you look at what you just said there with regards to, you know, that person goes home and then has a positive effect on family. There is something called morphogenetic resonance. Um, as we change as parents, we can then look at our children actually then change. Because remembering originally, they're a reflection of us anyway. anyway. <laughs> um, and um, so uh, I, when, um, when I really understood this law, uh, you know, say, for example, there might be something in our children that or that we don't that we'd like to change. And we can therefore one thing we can go and do is therefore talk to your child or even if the child is young um, and even adolescent or even an adult. Usually what will happen is that it'll be some sort of argument or it'll be, no, that's not true, because unfortunately, a lot of times um, as we know as parents, um, children sometimes don't like to take, <laughs> no matter who it be, no, no, um, no matter who it is, including um, ourselves, I'm sure, BK, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, however, what I do these days is literally I'll look at the emotion that is being express, expressed from my family, and then what I'll do then is I'll go back and find it in me because that's where it res resonated from, and that's the hardest thing is taking responsibility for all this. That is a hard thing for a lot of people to grasp. So I go back into me and I'll find it. And what I'll do then is I'll work on them releasing it and what will happen. And then I'll just start to notice the changes in my children. So one, the butterfly effect is very, very real in that if we can just keep on helping each other to be better human beings, we can change this world. We can make a huge influence on this world. And this has been proven time and time again, where you get enough people, say they 
um, end up um, a group of people, a large group of people meditates in your city, for example. And when that meditation is occurring during that hour, they find that the um, burglary and thefts and mayhem in the city declines by quite a nice percentage. And as soon as the meditation stops, all of a sudden, all the crime goes back to normal because there wasn't any substantial change made because it was only for an hour. But imagine if we're able to do, uh, to, to become a better human being bit by bit every single day, um, doing that Wednesday, and but maybe doing that starting off with one day, but then making it um, um, then Thursday, then Friday, doing it regularly. And what happens now is we're changing ourselves, we're changing our family, we're changing our community. We're then actually all this information now is going up into the fields. And what happens now is people can tap into these fields and they all of a sudden come back through meditation and through thought and they can actually feel better. It's just really incredible. And um, um, there's a, an old saying I like by Mitch Behan, and he said, all transformation is an inside job. <laughs> So it does not matter one bit what we change on the outside if we haven't done the work to change on the inside. Our reality will continue to evolve so that it is a reflection of our inner beliefs and world. Um, and it's, <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's just bringing tears to my eyes, BK, and everyone listening in terms of we have this innate ability to be able to do this and 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 um, it's... And we just got to be able to tap into it. Yeah, I think this is is hitting home for me as well because um, I think one of the best things about our industry and remember we are doing this for the network marketing industry uh, is that oftentimes we do talk about the fact that it is actually a personal development industry couch with a financial benefit. <laughs> Right, that's what a lot of times we talk about this. And and lately, a lot of my team members have started coming back to me and saying that, hey, I, I really find, I'm really finding myself growing as an individual because of my involvement with this industry. And Love I think that. that's one of the best things about it, right? Yeah. Um, but what hits home, I mean, what I was trying to say when, when Dr. Wayne talks about this and what really hits home is that um, so many times, I think because of uh, the industry and the, the nature of this industry, we do tend to deal a lot more with people more than anybody else. I mean, perhaps some other jobs that you, are, you used to do, you may not be dealing with people all the time. But for us in this industry, we kind of do need to deal with people more often than not, right? Um, and, and then you realize that a lot of times the things that are bugging you was actually yourself you know yeah, yeah. Uh, you have people who may bug you in certain aspects and and over time you start to realize that actually it's you <laughs> you know you are the one that is causing such reactions from people such negative sentiments from people and that is really the hardest thing to to really uh, reconcile with right to know that you are the one causing the problems in your own life sometimes. But once you understand that, and once you go introspectively looking at how I need to change myself, and I've done it for myself over the past few years. And, and you know, the other day, Dr. Wei, I just shared with you, somebody actually did tell me that um, he, she knows me for the past three years. And she said that, you know, BK, you have become a kinder person. Wow. You know, Fantastic. and as she yeah. said, she noticed that I've become a kinder person, and and I I thank her for that because um, that yeah that was one of the things I really wanted to do as well, right? But it wouldn't have happened if I didn't join this industry. It wouldn't have happened if yeah. I'm not fully invested in this industry. It wouldn't have happened if I did not get to know Dr. Wayne because he has helped me to look very clearly into myself many times. So this is one of the best things in our industry: the fact that we can grow as human beings. And, and if you have chosen to join this industry, we congratulate you. We think you have made a wonderful decision. But is it for everyone? Obviously not. There's nothing in this world that is for everyone, right? No, no. But if you have chosen to be in it, you know, you have been, you have chosen a very good industry. It is probably one of the cleanest, as Dr. Wayne always says, and it definitely will help you grow. 
And I think that is probably one of the best things that can happen to us. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, well said, BK. And um, Wayne Dyer put it a nice way as well. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change, <laughs> which is quite fascinating as well. So, um, so from there, I think, BK, we're just about um, at the end of this one. So the major thing here is just finishing off with Wayne Dyer's quote again, um, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So how do we change our future? It's through understanding these laws. And this one we're talking about here is the law of mindful, I'm sorry, the law of correspondence. So be aware of your thoughts. And as BK and I have said through this in different ways, one of the hardest things is to be responsible for your thoughts and take that responsibility and look deep into them. Don't judge them. We're just saying be responsible for them and be aware of them. So what happens when you do this and, and you start to realize, like I um, talked about right at the beginning, initially when I use an example of a lady that I was speaking to, initially you may see or may feel that there's nothing there. There's, you know, there's no thoughts and that's fine, but I don't want you to stop there. I want you to keep looking because as um, I described when that lady got into a, a fourth or fifth, what was it about, probably about 10 weeks of doing it, she then came to the realisation of how negative her thoughts were. And then she started taking responsibility, the same as BK. The only reason BK, someone has now said that he is kinder is because he's, take, he's taken responsibility for his thoughts. And if we can do that, we can dictate our future. We can collapse time. We can do these things that we once may have thought were impossible. And we can do this within an industry, the network marketing industry, whereby we can help so many different people. That's our goal. That's our purpose. That's our mission. And thanks again, BK, for a fantastic um, uh, podcast that we put together here. And thank you, Dr. Wayne, as well. It's been a joy and pleasure knowing you for the past few years, and I've learned so much. And now we are actually sharing the things I've been learning from you to the 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 bigger, the bigger world out there, right? Uh, through this podcast. So those of you who are on the call or listening to us uh, through the podcast, do us a big favor. If whatever the if the things that we've been sharing has helped you in any way at all, right? Do us a favor and share it out to people. Share with a friend, share with a family member, share with a colleague, share with a team member. Because when the whole idea is that when we bring awareness out there, then a lot of things can change, you know, and, and help us on this journey as well. So once again, if you want to look at the, uh, you're going to get access to the show notes for this episode as well as previous episodes, uh, you can check us out at um, networkmarketerpodcast.com. You can find us at networkmarketerpodcast.com. And um, we do have a program, a very special program that where we actually go very deep in depth into some of these laws that Dr. Wayne has talked about for um, last week and I'm uh, sorry, the week before last and this week, and also a lot more stuff as well in much greater detail. And also some uh, practical tips on how to actually practice them. You can find us, you can find that material at five, that's a numerical number five, five hiddenreasons.com. So numerical number five hiddenreasons.com. So thank you, Dr. Wayne, for a most interesting episode, law number two, and we look forward to another one with you. I'm going to just take us out with some quick music. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Peter. Everyone.